Hi, 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 and welcome to LNA Does Odious Stuff. So last week I published a video which was all about MIDI part one. <laughs> so logically, this will be all about MIDI part two. So this one will be a little bit more in detail, a little bit more advanced. So hopefully you like it and hope you like all the tips and tricks and stuff that I will show you. So let's get into it now. <sighs> Okay, okay. So on the top here, I have a loop brace. So what this loop brace means is that I can loop sections of this area very fast. So I can go to the end bit where is the black triangle and I can just drag uh, the loop brace where I want to hear the, the loop like that. Another way of that we can select a looped area using this loop phrase is that we can highlight an air, highlight time. So example, these notes here, I want to loop them. And then I right click, loop selection. There we go. And you can just loop it then. What can I also do is go to the loop phrase and it's a shortcut, just command will get me this area to the left, to the right, like that or if command and shift together, I can get the right end to come to me faster like this. Do -do. With uh, left and right, toggle it right and left. If you press up and down, it will go full bars left or right. By pressing command D, you can, you can duplicate the loop, which also duplicates what's inside of the loop. Also, what I can do is just select an area like this and I can right click it and crop the clip like this. So under the loop race, the first one is called start marker. So that will determine where does the loop start playing. For example, if I want it, the loop to start playing from the middle instead of from the beginning, I can just drag this flag into the middle of the sample. So now look where it starts playing. Great. This flag on the right is where does it end playing. So example, if this clip is not looping, I can press this loop button here like that. And now if I activate it, it starts playing from here and it ends playing it here. Perfect. So there's a couple ways that we can zoom in and out in this view. So if you, uh, the way that you scroll in with your mouse, you hold down command and you can just scroll in. If you wanna find a specific sample, you can click it and you can zoom directly into it. What we can do is also hold down Alt. So hold down Alt and scroll upwards. Otherwise, we have the clip overview here. And this is also where we can zoom in. So if I press my mouse on this preview, you can see this black line is appearing in the clip editing window. And if I hold down and start scrolling, it actually starts zooming into that position. So example, if you have a big file and you need to find a certain location, that's a very easy way of doing. So we can zoom in and zoom out like that. Also with zooming in and out, there is option where we can highlight notes that we want to zoom into and we can zoom into clip selection by clicking that area with right click and it zooms in just to those clips that you have selected. Zoom back from clip selection so we can also do that. Fun, just fun. Also, we already learned about record quantization quantization, but we can actually do it quantize also in this view. So what I can do is select all. So that's command A on my keyboard, or I can select them all by highlighting. So I go to an empty area where I can start dragging this like this, which starts selecting all of the MIDI notes. And now I can go right click and there I get two options. I get quantize and quantize settings. So first let's just go to the quantize settings to see what's happening here. So we have quantize the current grid. So we can select also a grid that we always want to quantize to. I want to select a qu uh, current grid amount. So amount is almost like, do you want it fully to snap to the grid or do you want it to just get as close to the grid as possible, but still kind of keep the human touch of it with hundred percent and look at the clips now, look at the notes, they will snap 
the beginning of them will snap to the closest grid that is measured. So let's talk about the grid. So grid, as I taught, are these lines here. If I right click any area on this view here, the editing view, I get a drop down menu. Adaptive grid is example when you're zooming in, it adapts to whatever position you are in, like this. You can see it changing. Otherwise, we can select a fixed grid, which means that it will always be exactly that grid. So example, eighth note. Now, if I zoom in, it will still be eighth note. So it's not changing. Otherwise, you can also have a triple grid, which means that it goes in thirds. So you can see that now this area here is one, two, three, one, two, three, instead of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, it goes one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So on the right side, it's the left side. I don't even know left and right anymore. <laughs> you can see the piano roll. If you want to preview what the sounds are that you want to draw in, you can press this headphone logo here and it allows you to preview what's on these notes. This is both with drum racks as well as MIDI instruments. So this here, Fold, especially good for percussion, uh, any kind of instruments that you might wanna use that has a lot of stuff in, you can use Fold. So Fold button actually allows you to only see the MIDI notes that actually have any content on them. So you can see that it removes everything unnecessary away, just the notes that actually has notes on it. Hey, in this point, please subscribe to this channel. Please hit the bell, I bell, bell icon, bell, bell icon. And please check out my Patreon account because there's a lot of quick tips and tricks and extra material. So link for that is down below. Okay, let's continue this tutorial. Also, what we need to know before we go to actually MIDI note edit, editing is that there's this area called scrub area. So it's the same area, same row on the top here that the start markers and the stop markers go. So you can see that when I hover with my mouse over it, it shows with a uh, like a speaker logo. So if I go to this uh, top bar here and I want to hear example this bar, I can go on the top, click there, and it starts playing the sample from that bar. But this is actually uh, related to the quantization, global quantization that you have. Example, I have one bar. So it will be starting from the one bar section where I click. So if I click here, it starts playing from the beginning of this one bar. But if I go here and select example uh, fourth quarter, then I can go every quarter like this and it starts playing it from the middle, not from the uh, start of the sample. Like that. If I hold down while pressing, I can actually loop that and listen, keep on listening what's happening there. Like this. And it now loops the quarter note area. So it's a very easy tactic if you actually want to listen a certain note over and over time. There is a way to also monitor what you're creating here in a really easy way. And that is this button here. So this is a follow button. And usually what we use this in here is in an arrangement view can we can follow the song while we're creating it. So you can see that the screen is moving. So we can do the same actually with MIDI here. So if we have that activated, if we start playing the clip, it can now follow what we are playing. Then we have also the duplicating time, deleting time and insert time. So we could exactly take example this area here that let's add some notes so we recognize it. So what we have, we have selected time here and now we would like to duplicate this time. So I can go uh, on the top bar, edit, yeah, and then duplicate time. There we go. And you can see that it duplicated the time exactly there. So we can also do the same thing is edit and delete time if we would like to, like that. So it doesn't change the loop prey size, but it just extends the, the actual sample. You can also do the same as like we can select an area, uh, create, we can go to create and insert time. Then select example two bars, okay. And there we go. Now we have two empty bars in the middle of the MIDI clip. 
perfect. Okay, so this is a very cool thing actually. We can select some nodes and what you can see on the top here is that now there's two of these white different markers that has appeared. Uh, and what I can do with them is actually move all the selected notes relative to the time that they originally put in. I can also take the other note, uh, other of these markers and I can take them to the other side like this if I like to. So I can reverse how they sound. Also, if I go to the middle here, you can see another marker appearing, which is called pseudo, like it's pseudo marker, pseudo? pseudo marker and then I can when I take that I can relatively again move the sounds the MIDI notes right or left cool I like that one there's a lot of different ways we can use to actually move these MIDI notes right left up and down or select them and there's a lot especially a uh, computer keyboard shortcuts for that so what I can do is example select an area and with my computer keyboards left and right I can put them left and right like this toggle them right and left I can hold down command and I can make them move in a smaller fractions holding down shift I can set, uh, change their size altogether holding down command I can change their size in fractions like this or holding down alt I can move into the next note or up or down selecting with the arrow buttons I can select which note do I want to example change? So example, I want that to be longer as well. So then I can hold down shift, go left and right, and I can make it longer. And then hold down alt again, go to another note, which I want to make longer like that. Okay, so then if I hold down shift, I can also make things go octave higher. So example, if we are on a chord, uh, chord instrument, it's great tune again. We're now starting from C2. What I can do is command A or select them all and holding down shift, I can shift them octave lower or octave higher. Like this. Not holding down shift and just selecting them or I can move them one note up and down just using my computer keyboard arrows up and down. I can also copy notes by using alt. So I hold, uh, pick a note, I hold down Alt and I can copy it like this. I can drag and copy it several times. Okay, and the next thing how we can select a row is a very cool because we will be talking about velocities in a minute. So this is a very useful example. If I just want to change something on this whole row together, I can example change the location of them or holding down Shift, I can change the duration of the notes. What also this is useful is velocities. So velocity controls are actually on the bottom here. So the lollipop looking things. So where I can get open that up is this triangle here. Velocity is perceived as the, the loudness of a note. It can also be that velocities are literally different samples of representation of the different loudness of a note. So example, if someone sampled a piano, piano if you play piano really quietly, then it, the sound is going to be different than if you press the button very hard. There's 127 velocity controls. So what we can do is control the velocities using these fun lollipops. So example, I can just pick one of the notes and then it turns like a darker color and I can just take that lip up and turn it in a lower velocity or higher velocity like this. You can see that the color of it uh, kind of fades away when it's in a lower velocity and when it's a very high velocity it turns darker. So example all the kicks now here might be in a different velocity slightly. So what I can do to make them all same velocity is that I just need to max them all up or lower them all up and then I can select a good velocity for all of them like that. So that's now that they're all same velocity. You just need to max them all up or lower them so that they all kind of even out. What if you would like to create a rowing velocity example for these hi-hats? There is this really cool thing for that and that is when you press hold, hold down command and four. And you can see that now the whole grid is just 
plinky. That allows me to do is going to the note separately and I can go to the note and now if you scroll up or down I can change the velocity of that note or I can select example group of them and holding down command and four I can go up and down or I can select all the hi-hats and then put them all up. And what you can see now is very cool. So what we can do is go to here and we can draw the line that we would like it to decrease in velocity. And check this out. So here now in the velocity area, I can draw by while holding down command. Oh, while holding down command and four. So if I hold, uh, select all of them, I can do the same thing. So you can see really in working. How cool is that? Like this. So that is cool. I would like to create a new clip, but I would like to see what's in this clip same time as, as I'm creating a new one. What I can do to see them same time is that I can select, hold down command while I'm selecting them. What's happened now is that actually I have two of the clips appearing same time. If I go hover over these, you can see that the blue ones, so which is the this clip here, appear. Or if I go to the pink one, there's nothing here. So I can start drawing in. The size of the pink sample is shorter than the Medusa one example. I could just zoom in and just see it in a whole clip. This allows me to example match the rhythm of both of these clips by seeing them same time. I can go and on the top of them like this. On the top bar here, I can you can see the color bars has appeared as well. So from these top bars, I can select which clip do I want to edit. So example, now if I have selected blue, I will add to the blue clip. If I go and select the pink, I will add to the pink clip like this. If I go from away from selected them both, I can now just see the clips that I have added to the pink clip and I can see just see the clips that I have added to the blue clip. I can also do many several times so I can hold down command and select what example these two and then I can select that one and that one and that one and all these same time. And what you can see now is a lot more of these samples on the top here and I can just go between them and select which one do I want to see. The same thing works exactly the same way in arrangement views on the different tracks like this, I can see them on the top of each other, the same way that we saw them in the session view. Check this out. So cool. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, this week we will be not doing a weekly question because this video is quite long anyhow. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to this channel and also make sure that you check out all my other All About Ableton Live videos and I will link the playlist down below so you can just go and study a bit more Ableton Live if you wish. Hey, please uh, come again, subscribe to this channel, please hit the bell icon and I'll see you here next time, okay? <laughs>